and ask your question in that way. You are also welcome to do that. All right, let's get started. So quarterly reporting is what we are talking about today. So this is the quarterly reporting for 24-25. There are not a lot of changes, so this should mostly be a review for most people. Um, if you are new, please feel free to ask any questions that you have about quarterly reporting. I do want to set the precedence that this is different quarterly reporting than the finance reporting. So finance has a different reporting than we have for quarterly. Uh, we are going to be covering the um, bullying, behavior, attendance, and um, truancy reporting today. So finance, contact uh, um, Pamela Partridge for questions about that. All right, so again, we're talking about bullying, behavior, daily attendance, and truancy today. Uh, in the, for reporting of, NIA, of uh, bullying, that is only done in NEO, so you do not need to report anything in Synergy if the, it's a bullying incident, unless the student was suspended for the bullying incident. So we'll get into the behavior matrix here in a moment to show you what that looks like. Uh, there's a really great graphic that can be used, and I'll show you where you can find that as well. Uh, behavior, daily attendance, and truancy are all data that are entered into Synergy, and then that data uploads into NEO um, on the hourly ETL. So that is just something to be aware of for data entry purposes. Quarter one is July through September, so July 1 through September 30th, and the due date for that data is October 15th. So that report is going to open for all three of these on 10-1. It will be due on 10-15, just a validation at this point for all three reports. Same with quarter two, that data will or that report will open on 115 or sorry 11 and will be due 115 that data will cover october through december quarter 3 january through march due on the 15th of april and then quarter 4 is april through june all school year certification so that's when the final certification of all of the data needs to be submitted um, there are a couple different type uh, different due dates for those reports um, so just be aware of that uh, at the end of the year, we will go through all of those. But for now, this is just a validation of the data uh, for what you have currently uh, for this year. Let's get into the bullying report. So the resources for bullying are on the student data entry and reporting page. And that uh, there is a specific uh, behavior matrix, again, that I mentioned previously, that can be found on the Synergy manual entry under behavior, and you'll find the behavior matri matrix on that for the behavior manual entry. So we'll talk about what that looks like here. And so this is uh, how you can determine how a bullying incident needs to be reported. So if a student, so we're going to start up here in the top left, did the incident result in any form of suspension, expulsion, or removal of the student to an alternative setting for at least half of the school day? If the answer is no, but it was a substantiated incident of bullying or cyberbullying, then the incident would be reported in NEO. NEO only. So there was no suspension, but it was bullying and, uh, or cyberbullying reported in NEO. If it was not bullying and there was no suspension, then there's no need to report anything. However, if the incident did result in expulsion or removal to an alternative setting, then the incident and the incident were was a bullying or cyberbullying incident. It would be reported in both Synergy and in NEO. So NEO would get a bullying incident report. Synergy would have a behavior incident uploaded for other. And so that would be um, reported in both of those locations. If you do not have access to the bullying reporting system in NEO, you will need to have an access request submitted on your behalf by your superintendent. That access request form can be found about halfway down the Medum support page and you can find it, uh, it will say NEO access, or sorry, access request form. So you can go through that process to get access. Once we're in NEO, it is a module for bullying reporting system. So we can see here, this is the dashboard when you first log into NEO. Bullying reporting system is going to be where we're going to select. 
Then we'll come into the bullying reporting system where we'll have all of the quarterly reporting due dates, all of the reporting requirements and some guidance for how to report incidents of bullying, definition of bullying, all of that information will be there. And then you can continue to scroll down to the very bottom of the page and you'll have an opportunity to select the click here to submit and review or certify substantiated incidents of bullying. This is where you're going to go to get into the report. Once you have selected that, you will come up to this screen where it will list any SAUs that you have access to. And in, uh, it will list your total number of incidents. This is where you can then have the opportunity to go in and add another incident. So if you're uh, reporting an additional incident, something is missing from the report, you can go in and create a new incident to add to the summary report. If you are going in to certify the report, everything has been and review all of the incidents that have been entered, you can select the school summary. The school summary will look like this, where it will list out all of the schools and e the in number of incidents per school, as well as the total district. Uh, reporting. Once that is reviewed and it is all set to go, superintendents can come in and select the reviewed button at the bottom here, and uh, that will come up as completed for the quarter one bullying report. Any questions about the bullying report before we move into the behavior report? All right, I'm not seeing any, so we are going to move forward to behavior reporting. So the behavior report is going to be um, entered into Synergy. So it's going to come from your local student information system, be uploaded into State Synergy, and then it will have an out on the hourly ECL upload into NEA. So this data, uh, once again, automatically goes from Synergy to NEO. If it's not in NEO, the first place you should check is to go back and look into Synergy. If it's not in Synergy, it needs to be uploaded from your local student information system. Guidance for behavior reporting can all be found on the student data entry and reporting page. So Synergy manual entry for behavior manual uh, and behavior manual entry um, again, that's the same resource from bullying and behavior that will have the matrix for when to report in both, Syner or in both Synergy and NEO or when to only report in Synergy or report in NEO. So that again can be found on that behavior manual entry on the student data entry page. Uh, Synergy uploads, this data can be uploaded to Synergy with an upload directly from your student information system. Um, so you can go ahead and use that if you need assistance with that. We're going to go through it here in a moment. Uh, actually, we're not going through that today, um, but the it is available very similar to all of the um, upload formats that we've been talking about in our personal upload, enrollment upload, and for the alternate economic status, the economic status upload. Student reporting instructions, are there is also a behavior PDF that you can take a look at there as well. Again, the matrix here, so if you have an incident that is um, a expulsion, suspension, or um, removal to, of the student to an alternative setting for at least half of the school day, then you would need to um, go through this process. Uh, if, they were, um, if they were removed from their setting to an alternative setting for at least half the day, uh, we would follow this down here. So yes, if it's bullying or cyberbullying, again, both reported in Synergy and in NEO. If it is not bullying or cyberbullying, then the incident uh, uh, continued down here. Did the incident involve a weapon or drugs, alcohol or violence? And then these are what you would report if the answer were yes. If it were none of those things, but they were still um, removed to an alternative setting for at least half of the school day, then you would report as other. Okay. Once you're in the uh, in Neo, the report this report will generate for the behavior certification report under student data and under student reports. Whoops. Let's go back to that one. And then, so if you don't have access to student data, you would need to have an access request form again, submitted on your behalf by your superintendent. 
and we would get that process so that you could get in there. If you do not have an active staff assignment, we will not be able to process that. So you will need to talk to someone with NEO staff access to get that updated. Locating the report in NEO, so student data, student reports, and then it's in alphabetical order here under enrollment, behavior certification report, and behavior details report. The certification report is going to give you an overall aggregate count of all of the student information of the student um, number of incidents uh, by incident type. Um, if you wanted to know the students that made up these counts here, uh, the one here and the one here, you can select into the view details report and that will give you the opportunity to see who is making up those counts. If you are, if this all looks good and you're aware of who the students are that are in there and you've verified all the information, your superintendent would come down to the bottom and they would submit review and submit to DOE. So that needs to happen on by that October 15th deadline for, for quarter one, by 115 for quarter two, 415 for quarter four or three, and then by the end of the year, 630 usually is the due date for quarter four. If you select into the details report, this is what you would see. You would see the name of the student, the attending uh, and responsible SAUs, and then you would see the incident type and the resolution duration. All of that data would have been entered from Synergy um, into the NEO system. This report can be sorted, uh, searched. Uh, you can save and export this, um, as Mike has pre previously pointed out in some previous webinars. Um, if you export this data, it will not update with new information. So once it's exported, that is a static file. Um, this report here will continue to update, but your report that you exported would will not. So just please be aware of that. Um, exported data will not reflect changes that you make in Synergy, whereas this report that is still in NEO when you're looking at it will after the hourly ETL. You also have the ability here to column sort. So if you're looking for a specific incident and want to make sure that it is included, you could search by incident, uh, you could search by student name, um, you should could sort by grade level, any way that you want to sort that information. Are there any questions about the behavior report before we move forward into daily attendance? All right, we will continue moving forward. Daily attendance report is the next on our agenda. The uh, daily attendance again is entered into Synergy. Uh, typically you will export a file. This can be a very large file in terms of the number of students times the number of days of attendance that you're entering. Um, so just be aware that it can be it can be rather lofty. Uh, when you are uploading information from Synergy or from your local student information system into Synergy, if you have already entered days of attendance um, and then you try to upload that information again, uh, you will see some some differences in the number of successful rows um, compared to the number of rows that were uploaded. Um, it will go off the number of different rows that have been uploaded into the report. Uh, we do get some questions about that in terms of, um, you know, was my file successful in uploading the information? Um, this is just one that works a little bit different than other ones in terms of what the success rate looks like. Um, if you are up, if you're kind of backdating your upload, to include previous information that was uploaded, then you're going to see um, some differences in what would be considered a success count. Um, so just be aware of that as well. Your error report should give you any current errors from the current upload that you're doing there, though. So just something to keep an eye out on. Um, if any changes, whoops, slipping again. Um, so if any changes need to be made to any data that you're seeing in NEO, once again, you will need to go back to Synergy to make sure that it's in the Synergy report. And then if it's not in Synergy, upload from your local student information system to make uh, to get that uploaded into student data. 
All of the resources for uh, daily attendance can be found again on the student data entry and reporting page, which is on the MEDM support page. So I highly recommend bookmarking the MEDM support page. Um, this is one of the pages that uh, links off of their student data. We wanted it and add a day of attendance for a student. This is how you would, uh, this is the guide you would want to use. It's at the top of this student data entry and reporting page. Working your way down that page, Synergy Uploads, there is a student daily attendance data dictionary that will go through all of the requirements for an upload. Student enrollment guidance has information about it daily attendance and what quantifies as attendance. So we collect based on 50% um, or more of the day. If a student was absent for 50% or more of the day, they are considered absent for the entire day. If they were present for 50% or, 50 or more of the day, that would be considered a present. Um, so that, that guidance will be included in the attendance data reporting. There's some guidance about excused absences. There's information about chronic absenteeism there. If you are interested in doing a deeper dive there, please feel free. Um, but that is under the student enrollment guides, attendance data reporting. Under the student reporting section on the student data entry and reporting page is all the information about the reports in NEO that include da daily attendance. So daily attendance detail report, daily attendance lookup tool, and then the daily attendance end of year certification. All of that information will be found on the um, under the student uh, reporting instructions. To locate this report, student data again in NEO, and then under student reports, daily attendance certification report is where this would be certified. Um, if you do not have access to student data, once again, if you need access, you need to have an active student staff assignment and your superintendent will need to submit an access request form on your behalf, and we will get that process so you can get in there. All of the daily attendance reports are again in alphabetical order, uh, daily attendance certification report, details report, student lookup, and summary report. Your certification report again is going to be your aggregation of all of the data from your school for all of your students. Your details report will go into detail about your specific schools, your students, uh, and give you information about each of the students there. Uh, your summary report is very similar there is also the student lookup report where you can go in and you can find a specific student and you can see all of their days of attendance that have been entered into Synergy. So if you're looking to see if a specific student has missed any, uh, has missed attendance days uploaded into Synergy, you can search for a specific student to get that information um, from here. When you're in the certification report, this is again where your superintendent will come in and certify. All of this information here, uh, the number of days enrolled should be your number of students times the number of days of school that you've had so far. So right now it may not be a complete report in terms of looking at the number of days, but if you have had 20 days of school, you would want 20 days times about the number of students that you've had, unless you've had students move in or students move out, that count should be pretty close. Um, and then so, and student, uh, just to also clarify, total days enrolled is not the total number of days that an enrollment exists in Synergy. It is the number of days that is of attendance that have been entered for your students. So um, for example, if you have an enrollment for September or from the beginning of the year that starts on 9-1 and goes until 9-30, the number of days enrolled would only be reflective of the number of days the student has for attendance. So that would be those Mondays through Fridays with the exception of the holiday weekend that we had in there. Um, so their attendance would probably be about 20. So their days of enrollment would be 20 days as opposed to 30 days for the month of October of September. So just kind of be aware of that. Uh, total number of days absent or present and then total number of days absent. This is for all of your students in the district. 
Uh, and then you have your total number of students that were counted in this. So if you have if you have all of your students in there, um, this will be an aggregation of all of the students who have been enrolled at any point. So move ins and move outs will also be counted in there. Uh, it's not a snapshot day. It's going to be all of your students that were counted. And then your total number of students that are chronically absent are going to be in this column. Chronically absent is all absences regardless of excused or unexcused and meeting a 10% uh, or more of the um, enrollment being absences. So they're enrolled for at least 10 days and they've met the threshold of 10% of their attendance being absences. So those, so 33.33% of this student body are considered chronically absent. So if you wanted to see who the student was that was abs that was chronically absent, we could link into the summary report and identify the student there. You can also identify your uh, incomplete record. So that's a student that has an enrollment for more than 10 days and has no attendance entered. Sometimes that happens when you backdate an attendance day uh, for if your one day enrollment is more than one day. Uh, it can cause that issue there. Um, so you can either backdate the um, last the exit date or you can um, if it's a student that is attending school and needs to have attendance entered, you can start entering that attendance for those students. Yeah, but that is and, a, um, go ahead. Sorry, I just wanted to chime in because it comes up every year because with the chronic absenteeism. Um, so because it's a percentage based um, of their absences to their total. Um, it is very easy to have a chronically absent student for Q1. If you think about it, you guys, you know, you only have been in school more or less for a month, even though we're doing it for the whole quarter. So if you only have, you know, maybe 20, 22 school days, um, if a kid misses three days of school in this first month, they're chronically absent because it's time that it's that 10% threshold. If you only have like 20 days, uh, might even only be two days if you only had 20. Um, so just keep that in mind. Um, it's not a problem. We we don't report the chronic absenteeism numbers till the end of the year. Um, but just so just be aware of that. And then as the year goes on and we, you have more school days, that percentage balances out until we get to the end. So um, also kind of goes the same for Q2. And then by Q3, it's pretty much going to be pretty, pretty spot on. So just keep that in mind. Great, point, Mike. Yep. So this is just something we collect this quarterly because it's um, this is a really big file. This is a lot of information. As Mike was just saying, it's going to change throughout the year. Um, you're going to have more days of attendance entered. You're going to have more um, information about you know absences, unexcused or excused. So um, as those changes happen, you can go back to quarter one if we're past the quarter one threshold or the quarter one validation. You can go back and edit data for quarter one and that's that's fine. Uh, but where this is such a large amount of data, doing this as often as you can to get the information into the system can really cut down on these reports when they come up, uh, especially at the end of the year. Because uh, again, number of students times the number of days, you're looking at 175 days of attendance and you have 200 students, that's a lot of, that's a lot of attendance to look at. Um, and make sure that it's accurate throughout the year so, uh, at, when you're at the end of the year. So the more you can check in with this throughout the year, the better off it's going to be um, in terms of cleanliness of your attendance data. Uh, and this is where your superintendent would come in and validate this. Um, this gray validate button would be uh, lit up for them so that they could come in and validate. Once they validated, you would see validation number one would be here. It would say who did it and what the date was for that validation. Uh, same with two, three, and then end of year certification. That's the final, we wrap it up, put a bow on it and send it off for federal reporting. So just be aware of that. That's the end all be all kind of due date. And so the summary report again, this is gonna go into detail about spe um, your specific students who are making up those counts. This report can be searched if you're looking for a specific student. Uh, it can also be exported. Again, if you are updating any of this information and you export this file, the exported file will not show the, uh, the updated information from uh, Synergy. So just be aware of that. You also have column sorting here. One of the columns that I do recommend taking a look at as often as you can is that incomplete data reporting one. 
Um, so making sure that anyone with a Y in this column ends up getting uh, data entered for attendance um, or updating their enrollment so that they're only one day, if that was the case for the student that you're looking at. Uh, but if they were there for 10 or more days during the school year, they need to have attendance there. Um, oh, and then the student details also are available on these reports so that you can link into the specific student. So if you were looking at this student who is chronically absent and you wanted to see what the days of attendance were specifically for this student, you have the ability to look at all of the individual days for the student in Synergy, but you also have the student, uh, the link to student details, which will give you the information for each and every day of the student's attendance. So it will list out um, nine one, or nine one's a really bad example because it's a Sunday, but it will list out like nine five present uh, remote or nine five or nine six absent, uh, unexcused uh, or unexcused absent and present or in person. That's the one. Um, so it will list out all of that information for you here so you can dive a little bit deeper into the specific student. Uh, but otherwise, uh, you can also use this to see if any attendance is missing for this specific student. And you can see here for this one, this is like an end of the year type of thing. Uh, but looking at this one, this student looks like they've had um, 145 days. That would be worth looking into to say, OK, did they move in late um, or did they move out early? Were they missing? Was there a chunk of time where they were not enrolled with us? Um, so that would be something to keep an eye on if they're not meeting that days enrolled. This column can be sorted from low to high. Um, so if you sort and you have really low days of enrollment for some of your students, those would be the students to check in on and say, OK, did they move in? Did they move out? Um, are they missing attendance for any particular reason? So just that's a way to validate your data and check things out to make sure that everything is in there throughout the year. All right, and we will move forward to truancy reporting. Again, this information is entered into Synergy uh, through an upload from your local student information system or through uh, direct entry into State Synergy, and then it will feed the uh, NEO student data reports. Resources for truancy reporting can be found on the student data entry and reporting page. Synergy manual entry, truancy manual entry is one of your options there. Under Synergy Uploads, we have the Truancy Data Dictionary, which will go through all of the requirements for uploads. And then the Student Enrollment Guides, there is a full topic for truancy. So it has its own table under Student Enrollment Guides, uh, similar to the, the economic status information. There is also a Truancy Reporting Instructions under uh, Student Reporting Instructions. So be aware of that. You have that opportunity there as well. Again, this report is in student data under student reports, truancy certification report. Once you're logged into the NEO, uh, once you're logged into NEO, you'll need to navigate to student data. If you don't have access to student data, we do need that uh, access request form submitted by your superintendent on your behalf. If you do not have an active staff assignment, we cannot process that request. When we are on the student data page, the student reports page, actually. If we scroll down to the bottom, again, these are in alphabetical order. Scroll down toward the bottom, truancy certification report and truancy details report are at the bottom of the student enrollment uh, category. The truancy certification report will be aggregate counts of your number of incidents, of uh, unexcused absences, excused absences, and this will pull from your attendance data. Um, so just be aware of that. If you have incomplete truancy incidents, I think we actually changed the language, language of that and it is not, um, I think it's like to be reviewed or something might correct me if I'm wrong. Um, but this column is your truancies to review. Uh, if you have any incidents here, you would need to go through and identify, uh, it means that, NEO has identified that there is a student with that meets the truancy threshold and you need to go in and review that student and add an incident if necessary. So 
Once you link into the details report, it will go through those specific students and it will show you where the day of attendance is coming from. So we can see here that this particular student had this number of unexcused absences in their attendance data, which according to the truancy type indicates that they would have met this threshold. So they need, um, so this is their truancy type. This one here, so this one has been entered. This next one, according to daily attendance, there are 13 unexcused absences. And this one is saying, please verify attendance data and add a truancy record if necessary. So there's no truancy that has been entered into Synergy for this particular student, but uh, NEO is indicating that there is a potential truancy there. So you would wanna go in and review that uh, data, make sure everything was accurate, updated if necessary. Um, and then if there, if it is an accurate truancy incident, you would need to start following through on the steps and start uploading the truancy information. This again is searchable, savable, exportable, and you can also sort your columns here for this report. So if you were looking for a specific incident, you could sort by grade level, you could search this for a specific student, however you needed to do that. Questions about truancy? All right, if there are any questions following this webinar, please feel free to reach out to medems.support at main.gov, M-E-D-M-S dot support at main.gov. Uh, also, please bookmark the website. Uh, our page is um, under data reporting, and then we're Metam support. So please feel free to check that out. And if you need to, give us a call, 624-6896. Um, so I'll hang out for a moment here if there are any questions. Um, and then once I start to see people kind of fall away, I will close everything down. I hope everyone has a great rest of their day. If you have anything coming up, uh, please feel free to reach out. Um, we do have a webinar scheduled tomorrow for students who are um, eligible for Title I funding attending a private uh, non-public school. And we have a webinar on Thursday regarding multilingual learner upload. So looking forward to seeing you there. And I hope you have a great rest of your Tuesday. Yeah, and um, I figured I would, I know some people have already pieced out. We kind of were getting it a uh there uh, at the end, but I wanted to go through, because this comes up every time, uh, every year with everybody, and it's a very popular question about truancy specifically. Um, kind of shocked nobody asked, um, but it's regarding students, because you know it's the beginning of the school year, and you're going to have students that maybe you're not returning, and you might not have any idea where they're at. Uh, so it's some very, very common guidance that we end up having to give folks. So if they are of um, compulsory age, so meaning they are not yet 17, then if they were with you in June and you were expecting them back this fall and you just have not heard from the family at all over the summer, uh, maybe you're not really sure what's going on. Hey, they haven't shown up for this first week of classes. Um, you most likely did enroll them and you actually do wanna have them enrolled and start tracking truancy for those kids. And essentially, you're not going to be able to exit them um, really at all until you fully exhausted the truancy process and something's come of it, or you reach the end of the school year and you have just no idea where they are. Um, then at that point, you can exit them as well and you don't need to re enroll them. But um, just a super common question for you yeah, kids that are not returning, you do, if they're compulsory age, you do need to pick them up. You do need to start truancy, track them as unexcused absences, and then keep going with that. And if they, if the student is 17 or if they turn 17 over the summer and they're not showing up, you know, obviously you guys are going to want to try to follow up to the best of your ability to see what's going on. You know, hey, are you, are you coming back for senior year or, you know, what are you doing? Um, absolutely do that. But you do not start a truancy with them and you do not necessarily need to re-enroll them. If you've kind of heard through the grapevine that, oh, they're, you know, they're just not coming back. If they're if they're not of that compulsory age, you are not compelled to enroll them at that point. So it kind of just depends on their age and what you guys have found out. Um, and just keep in mind, you know, those 17 year olds, they will count as dropouts um, if they're not returned 
to school by October 1. But yeah, just some super common stuff that um, I'm shocked that nobody, nobody brought up. Maybe you guys are all just the veterans. And you, you've already heard that spiel from me, so that could be it. Um, any, any questions on that while we're here and we can kind of talk about it as a group because it just always comes up. Yeah, go ahead, Chris. I, I'm sorry, I don't have my, my chat is not working. So I have two questions, if I may. Um, mm -hmm. In order to create the truancy, um, the, the unexcused absence for the truancy people, um, we need to enroll them into a classroom um, so that the teacher can mark them absent every day. Mm -hmm. uh, but that yep. takes up space in that classroom. And if we need mm -hmm. that, that seat for another kid to come in, how do we deal mm -hmm. with that? Yeah, that's a great question. That's uh, something that like your infinite campus power school folks would kind of need to account for. Um, it's nothing, it's really, it's nothing to do with us at the state level at that point. I totally get what you mean. That makes some sense, but uh, they've got, I think what, um, what other folks have done is they've, they've created a class that, and I'm, I'm not sure they might just call it uh, the truancy class or something. So they put something into the schedule in your local SIS. That way you can enroll them and give them a schedule somewhere and then uh, track them as unexcused from that point. So I think that's what a lot of people do. And okay. I don't know if that'll mess anything else up for you, but that's uh, correct me if I'm wrong, folks. I think that's a pretty common practice. Okay, I'll check with guidance on that. The second question goes to earlier with the bullying uploaded into the, uh, the bullying in NEO. Um, it doesn't come through Synergy. Is there a way to bulk upload uh, bullying data into NEO itself, or does that have to be done individually? Yeah, it's a, it's a per incident basis at the moment. So yeah, that's um, probably something that we'll be exploring for the new system as we go into the future. But yeah, right now it's kind of a one at a time type of deal. Um, a lot of schools, what they will do is they'll divvy out that responsibility to their uh, various principals. And so the principal of each school will have NEO access, they can get into the bullying module. And then um, as things are happening and substantiated, they can kind of go in and enter that. That way you don't have to get a list of, you know, I mean, hopefully it's not that many, but you know, if you get a list of 75 or something and you got to punch those in, that could be quite, you know, take up a whole afternoon easily. So. Um, that that's what I would recommend. Yeah, try to divvy it out to folks, principals, or somebody that uh, you can trust to enter that data accurately. Great, thank you very much. Yep. There was Good a question. question in the chat also about where to find the um, calendar of events. So uh, we do not currently have a upcoming webinar presentation list because we were double posting. Um, on the DOE calendar as well as on our page. So if on the DOE page you search for calendar, the event calendar will be the first thing that pops up and you can go to that. And there's a event type um, or host. Under host, you can see all of the data reporting um, up, uh, all the data reporting webinars that are coming up. So those are all available there. And um, one other scenario I'll throw at you guys too, just for your for your information. Um, the other one would be like, let's say we've got a pre-K or a kindergarten student um, that you know maybe uh, the family was like, oh yeah, we're gonna you know totally go to go with your district and the school this year. And so they kind of like pre-registered them over the summer, and they're getting ready to go. And then it comes uh, first day of class, and then they end up uh, let's just say trans going. You know, if they're in the case of pre-K, let's say they're like, ah, no, you know what, we're we're not gonna start this year. You know, they're Little little Johnny's still not quite ready for it. We're gonna we're gonna hold off. Um, if you have things like that, um, you do not need to enroll that student with us for state reporting. You did not provide any instruction at all. Don't even worry about it. Totally fine. Um, same kind of deal if they're say um, a kindergartner or something, and they thought they were gonna go to your district, but they ended up going you know to a, another district for whatever reason. Um, in that in those cases, once again, if you didn't provide any instruction, they never step foot in the building. Um, don't worry about putting in that one day enrollment. We don't need to see it. It's not going to get reported anywhere. You didn't do any instruction. Um, so if you try to enroll those one days for kids that didn't do anything, you're probably just going to step on the toes of the other district that's trying to actually enroll them and you're going to end up having to move your dates and so on. Um, so just a couple of really common things uh, just so you know how to handle them. 
but we got some more questions. Uh, Cindy. Cindy Young, if you're talking, you're muted. Or we can't hear you. I'm sorry, if that's me, I must have done that by error. I do not have a question. Sorry about that. No, it's Cindy Young. No, you're good, Cindy. Oh, good. Thank you. I just heard Cindy and figured I should respond. Okay. No, you're good. <laughs> Thank you. Hi, Cindy. Um, Cindy, well, uh, Cindy Young, if you want to put your um, question in the in the comments, maybe we can get it answered. And then Naomi, if you want to ask your question. Yeah, and um, we'll we'll address the lanes first. Can you clarify sure. a little bit? Um, what do you mean, Elaine? Because you cannot enroll a student if we've gotten verbal notification that they've left the state. So do you mean, do you mean like no, you should so not? Okay. So we had um, we have sometimes uh, students who leave the state and don't fill out, you know, the paperwork or whatever. And not all states um, will do a records request. And so when they move out of state, and we've gotten some kind of contact with the parent that has said they're moving out of state, I let them go. Right. Yep. And uh, I I would say that's that's totally fine. Uh, Cause yeah, you know, you're not, you're often never going to see that records request. Um, we always want to advise you guys kind of use your best judgment. You know, you, you guys know these families and you know, if they're like, oh yeah, we're, we're moving to New Hampshire. And then you see them in the grocery store next week. And the week after that, um, you know, probably want to follow up on that and see what's going on. Um, so, you know, you use your judgment. And if a family, you know, says they're moving out of state and, it seems like that's totally cool with you and you don't have any uh, qualms about it. Yeah, absolutely. Just go ahead and exit them. Um, if you have reservations, though, if you're like, uh, you know, mom and dad have been going through this situation and we don't know if that's really correct. You know, yeah, use your judgment and follow up on things as you see fit. You know, hold the enrollments a little longer to make sure um, that's, you know, you just want to be able to always say, you know, you did everything you could and you covered all your bases and that's how we'll always advise you guys. So, but yeah, in that, in that case, Lane, yeah, absolutely. Just exit them out of state if you feel good about it. Yeah. Cindy Young, I know you left and came back. Did you want to try to ask your question? Still. Still can't muted. Hear you. Yeah, if you're still muted, if uh, you're trying to ch chat with us. Yeah. Um, Naomi, you want to take the floor while Cindy's figuring it out? Also, uh, can't hear you either, Naomi. She might be, maybe she'd try to rejoin it for a second. Yeah, it looks like it's giving us some issues today. Yeah. But we, uh, we're gonna, we can end today, I think. And then um, Cindy and Naomi, if you want to, Naomi is trying to rejoin now. Um, if we can't get the question answered now, we can maybe. Hey, can you hear me now? Yes, we can hear you now, Naomi. I was on the browser and I couldn't turn on my mic, so I went to the app. Oh. Um, yeah, so Mike and I have been caught, um, emailing back and forth, and I have a lot of issues with McKenty, you know, homeless students. And <laughs> we have students who were superintendents agreements last year. They are now, they still live where they did last year, I guess, but just considering themselves as homeless now. And so my homeless liaison is saying they don't need a supers agreement, but I, what would I code them <laughs> if they don't need one? So if you have students who are experiencing homelessness, 
they do have the right to stay in your district. Um, in terms of McKinney Vento, if they are um, if they are living out of district, you can put in a superintendent's agreement with their resident town of being where you understand it to be where they live. Um, but there does not need to be a formal superintendent's agreement in okay. place. So, so you I just can leave use them. the code. I can use the code. Need... They just don't have Correct. to. Okay, that answers that yeah. one. Uh, yeah, because her her flavor alley was a little bit different because I. If I understood from the email, Naomi, they yep. they they weren't actually a resident of your district last year. They weren't. No, they were supers agreements have been for a few years, but this year they're oh, saying they're gotcha. homeless. Okay, gotcha. So if you yeah, so if you guys were super agreeing with them last year, and they basically want to continue their um, school of origin, essentially is how they refer to it. Right. Then, yeah, they that would actually, I think that would be covered. Um, so yeah, as long as as long as you guys are cool with it and the sending their resident SAU is cool with it, um, yeah, you can just super agree with them and it should be fine. Um, I don't have to go through the official getting the superintendent's agreement signed off and all of that. Yeah, you can... it's just a way to keep them in their resident or in their origin uh, school of origin. Their home. Um, if it's if it's if it's truly due to homelessness, because I could see because, yeah, that, that could get a little bit interesting because if they like if you guys were in the process of denying, say, a super agreement and then like, oh, well, oh, yeah, uh, we're homeless. Yeah. So we just get to go there anyway, <laughs> whether regardless right. what you guys want or not. Um, That's not exactly how that's set up. So. Yeah, I'll double um, check on that, but I don't think that's the case. Yeah, yeah, probably not. But yeah, just make sure it's on the up and up, and it should right. be fine. No one's yep. gonna. We all want what's best for the kids. So, all yeah. right. Thanks for letting me uh, hijack this a little bit on my soapbox, but uh, I was surprised <laughs> when nobody answered it. So I was like, all right, I'll, I'll ask the question for you guys because I know I'm going to I'm going to hop off this. I'm going to answer some emails about it. So. All right. I don't see any other questions coming in. So I think with that, we can probably close out today's webinar. I hope everyone has a great rest of their day. If you have any questions come up, please feel free to give us a call um, and we'll be happy to help. Thanks, everybody. Thank you.